I noticed when I plugged my drive in that the Seagate Backup Plus drive name pops up, but it just has a generic black hard drive image. So Seagate was just lazy and put the same image for all of their different colored hard drives. So if you haven't already, click on the view tab and turn on view hidden items and file name extensions so that you can see the Backup Plus icon logo and the autorun.inf. This volume icon ICNS I think is for Max and I think this little weird thing is for Max. So this is what we're going to change. If you double click auto run, a notepad will pop up. It will automatically run as the icon file, the backup plus .ico file, which is this. So we need to change this backup plus ICO file to match the hard drive we're currently using. So you can search Google for images of the drive and since i have a blue one i'm going to search blue you can find images i find amazon if you find amazon link might have a higher res image of what you're looking for this you can see is a blue one but this is the two terabyte version so you can tell it's skinnier it's thinner and this one is thicker because this is the four terabyte version so this is the exact uh, version that i have so I, you can just save the image, rename it to a uh, Seagate Backup Plus 4 terabyte blue. But it's a JPEG now, so we need to turn it into an uh, ICO file. You could go to Photopea, and they have a nice online Photoshop program. So new project. So over here, so the maximum pixel size for an ICO file is 256 by... 256 pixels it's a square but the maximum size I see an S file for max is a 512 by 512 size and depending on which one you want you will create a project with those dimensions uh, since I'm gonna make both I will start at the larger one at 512 so now I'm just gonna drag my JPEG into the Photoshop program hit enter and you'll see two layers here. You need to uncheck the lock and delete the background layer so you can get the uh, transparent background. And we need to right click and rasterize the current image so we can edit it. Then we can go to the magic wand tool. Let's tolerate 100% of whatever we're going to click on. And let's give it a feather of one pixel. And we're going to click on the little white border around the hard drive. And now you can see it's selecting a little bit more of the drive than we uh, expect. So I'm going to reduce the tolerance to 50 and select the white again. Now you can see it's it selects the white a little bit better. And then you can just hit delete to remove the white and you, we can have a transparent back. There's a little bit of extra white here so you can just select the uh, just a thin layer. So to just be safe that I grabbed everything I'm just going to select right to the edge and hit delete again. You can see a little bit more white disappeared there. This is just a little cleanup. I'm going to try to select like one pixel. I think two pixels have been selected here. Let's clean up a little bit here. And now it's looking good. One last thing I like to do is with the layer selected, you can go to edit and free transform. And now just stretch the top and bottom so that it's kissing the edge right on the edge so I'm gonna literally move this one pixel so it's just kissing the edge right there just like that and make sure it's it stayed centered and everything and now we can go file export as so you can either go straight to export as an ICO but this isn't a full-fledged ICO file that contains multiple resolutions it contains only one better to have this original PNG file so you can use this to make icon files in any different ways you would like so that I can name this Seagate backup plus 4 terabyte blue 512 by 512 so if I ever needed to go back and re-edit this file I could just use this PNG 
now I am going to, since I made it um, in the larger size, I can easily just make it smaller and do 256 by 256 so that it can resample it as a smaller size for um, PCs. And now I can export this again as a PNG, the smaller version. Now I will show you, you can see that you can export an I ICO file straight from the Photopea website. It's an ICO file that will only contain one resolution. And I am going to go ahead and use this file to show you why you should not use a file that contains only this resolution. I have the original JPEG PNG that's 512 by 512 for Macs, a PNG that's 256 by 256 for Windows, and these are just basically like backup files so I can use these to make the icons. And this is the actual icon file, the ICO. And now it is as simple as copying this ICO file into your hard drive. Uh, you can right click it, properties, um, unblock it. It says this file came from another computer, so you can unblock it and you can make it hidden, apply. And now you might think that you can just name this image a backup plus and replace this one. But in my experience, that doesn't work. It looks like Windows copies this image into a cache somewhere and even if you change this image windows will just keep loading that cache and i have not figured out exactly how to delete or reset that cache plus i also like to keep the original icon file so what i like to do i just change the name backup plus blue ico file and then I, I just throw this into like the Seagate file to just safekeeping archival if I ever want it back again. Since this ICO file has blue at the end, I open up the auto run and I just change this to the new title. So now it's going to look for a backup plus blue ICO. The cache in Windows has not saved an image under this name it will grab this image and all you have to do now is eject your hard drive then unplug the hard drive from your computer and just plug it back in and there now you can see that the new blue image pops up and you can see the blue image loading nice over here and yeah and now when you go into this pc you have the nice blue image that actually matches your uh, hard drive. Now one thing I'm noticing is that you can see there's a bunch of aliasing um, lines on this mini image here. You can tell it's a bit, uh, it's not that smooth, it's a bit choppy on the top and bottom. What you need is an ICO file that contains multiple resolutions, multiple sizes of the same image together in one. So this is where having the original 246 by 246 PNG comes in handy. Go to ICO convert. So you can go to home, choose the file to upload. So I could choose the 256 PNG. Now that the image is uploaded, you can select ICO for Windows 10. I think they're going to convert PNG into all of these different uh, resolutions. Then you just click on convert ICO and then you can download your icons. And there it looks like it has made multiple resolutions into one ICO file. This is the original ICO that exported from the Photopea site and you can see an ICO that's 256 by 256. This is a 48 by 48 export from that site and you can see the thumbnail is very tiny. But in this one it says it's 48 by 48 in dimensions but you see the bigger thumbnail because it contains multiple thumbnails. You can also tell by the um, image size, 31 kilobytes, 2.29 kilobytes, and this one is 47 kilobytes, the largest one. So this one contains multiple images. And now you can copy this one into your hard drive. Now I'm gonna name this backup plus four terabytes blue and make this hidden, unblock it, 
and now change the auto run to the current ICO. And now once again, unplug the drive and plug it back in. And now you have a proper ICO file that contains all the different dimensions. So you can see the image looks nice here without any aliasing. It's nice and straight lines because it's using the smaller dimensions for this image. You can see the image on the right here has the larger resolution image, so it looks nice. And when you view it on this PC, you get the nice large image on the icon here, and it matches perfectly with your hard drive. I'm just going to delete the other two I use for example, and that is all you need to keep. Now I don't have a Mac, so I can't test and figure out how it would work exactly on the Mac. I created an ICNS file. You can just search like PNG to ICNS converter. You can just find free, easy to use websites. Now you can drag the 512 version into here, convert. I can't test this on a Mac. This hard drive is also formatted as NTFS, so I'll probably never use it on a Mac. So I'm totally happy and fine with this. But this is basically how you can change the icon file for your hard drives to make it look a lot nicer. Now you can see I own four different colors of the Seagate Backup Plus drives. And after converting all of the icons, you can see it looks very nice, making it very easy for me to know which hard drive I'm accessing because I can simply just see the colored icon. I hope you enjoy learning another way of customizing your computer to look nice the way you'd like. And if you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.